Hello, this is Professor Madero again, and this time we are going to be looking at body system and root operation coding guidelines. So let's get started. In PCS, there are specific coding guidelines. The medical and surgical section guidelines, which is section zero, which represents 90% of all the codes in the PCS coding system, include guidelines for each character. The body system, which is number two, character two, root operation, which is the largest section of coding guidelines, which is number three, character number three, the body part, character number four, approach, character number five, device, character number six, and the qualifier, which is character number seven. Um, there are coding conventions and guidelines. Um, if you're watching this video, you've already seen the coding conventions video, which apply to the entire code set, but these guidelines are specific to sections of the code set. They don't apply to the entire code set. So general guidelines, B2.1A. Now, just as a background, the coding guidelines are located in your PCS coding manual. Please open your table of contents and on the very top it should say coding guidelines and you can use that section to follow along in this video. If you want to pause it and open your coding manual, you could follow along. Um, so this coding guideline says the procedure codes in general anatomical region body systems can be used when the procedure is performed on an anatomical region rather than a specific body part. That is root operations, control, detachment, drainage of a body cavity, or on rare occasion when no information is available to support an assignment of a code to a specific body part. For example, control of postoperative hemorrhage is coded to the root operation control found in the general anatomical region's body system. Um, body systems are typically used for the root operation control, detachment, alteration, in which is a cosmetic procedure, or even creation uh, when they're creating uh, male to female or female to male. Um, those are all considerations. Um, another example of body systems when they're used is, let's say there is a gunshot wound or a laceration in a region of the body. Let's say there's a laceration of the abdomen. The abdomen does not belong to the gastrointestinal body system, but the abdominal area belongs to the general anatomical region. Uh, code, uh, coding guideline B2.1B. There is general body part values for the upper and lower provided as an option in the upper arteries, lower arteries, upper veins, lower veins, muscles and tendon body systems, upper or lower specifies body parts above or below the diaphragm. You want to know where your bad diaphragm is? Take your two fingers and you touch where in your abdomen, the abdominal area on your side, either side, right or left. That point where you could feel your rib bones, but then right below you feel the soft spot, that's your abdomen. Right underneath your rib cage is your diaphragm. So any body system below your ribs is considered the lower anatomical region. Any body system that is considered above the diaphragm is considered upper regions. And there is a general area which includes the head and the abdominal cavity. For example, a shoulder is going to be an upper region. Um, a knee is going to be in a lower region. But uh, let's say crack ribs, um, that area would be in the anatomical general area. Okay. Um, root operation guidelines. Um, B3.1A, um, in order to determine the appropriate root operation, the full definition of the root operation as contained in the PCS table must be applied. This is really, really important. You have to know the root operation really well because some root operations 
sep are separated by just a couple of words. For example, excision is taking out part of a body part. Resection is taking out the entire body part. So we want to focus on the actual details. The full definition needs to be applied. A lot of students, if they see documentation of removing a body part, they'll use the removal body, uh, the root operation. But in removal, it says removal of a device. When you take out a body part, you're not taking out a device. So it cannot be root operation removal. I hope that makes sense. Um, the next is B3.1B. Components of a procedure spe specified in the root operation definition and explanation are not coded separately. For example, procedural steps necessary to reach the operative site and close the operative site, including anastomosis of a tubular body part, are also not coded separately. And we're going to learn more about this specifically when we talk about reading through the operative narrative when we get to module three. So hang on to this. We're going to come back. Um, we talked about the general anatomical regions, such as the main body parts, um, the body cavities, the head, neck, chest wall, abdominal, and upper and lower back. In the upper and lower, we talked about upper and lower diaphragm. Okay, B3.2, multiple procedures. Uh, this is when you need more than one procedure code for a case, and there are four circumstances in which this happens. The same root operation on different body parts. So let's say you have, um, you're taking out both ovaries. Um, so it's the same root operation, it's a resection root operation, you're taking the whole body part, but you have different body parts, a right and left side ovary, okay? The section, um, the second option is the same root operation repeated in multiple body parts. Um, it's the same thing. Um, you have, uh, for example, it gave you excision of the sartorius muscle and excision of the gracilis muscle are both included in the upper leg muscle body part value. So multiple procedures are coded, and that's an example. Multiple root operations with distinct objectives are performed on the same body part. For example, they give the example here of destruction of the sigmoid lesion and bypass of the sigmoid colon are coded separately. That means they have two separate codes. Even though it's one procedure, all of these are one operative procedure a time. So these procedures are taking place at the same time. The last one, the intended root operation is attempted using one approach, but is converted to a different approach. For example, if you have a laparoscopic appendectomy, that something goes wrong, they have to switch to an open appendectomy, then you include both codes. Okay. Uh, discontinued or incomplete procedures. Um, if the intended procedure is discontinued or otherwise not completed, code the procedure to the root operation performed. If a procedure is discontinued before any root operation is performed, code the root operation inspection of the body part of anatomical region inspected. For example, there is a point of no return. If the physician has gone into the surgical area and started making changes such as um, cuts or inserting a device and then the patient doesn't respond well and they have to get out because they already started the procedure um, inside the body cavity you have to code the original root operation however if a physician opens a patient and before even starting a procedure they decide to get out because the patient is unstable the root operation would be inspection and um, the anatomical region would be the body system. Biopsy procedures. Um, biopsy procedures are coded using root operations excision, extraction, or drainage. And they're the only three root operations that allow for the qualifier diagnostic X. So um, these are for only for biopsies. So if I do a detachment, which is an amputation, um, I can't ever use the diagnostic qualifier. I can only use for excision, extraction, or drainage. Those are the only root operations that are allowed. 
What if I added the X qualifier? Those codes don't even exist, so automatically would be rejected. So biopsy followed by more definite in, um, treatment. This is an important one. If a diagnostic excision extraction or drainage procedure, which is biopsy, they all use the diagnostic X, is followed by a most more definite procedure, such as destruction, excision, or resection at the same procedure site, both the biopsy and the more definite treatment are coded. This is not very common. This would be like when someone goes in for a breast biopsy and they notice that the um, cancer is quite advanced, so they decide they did the biopsy and they decide, you know, we're just going to have to take the entire breast out. So in that case, um, both the biopsy and the partial mastectomy are proceed are coded. Overlapping body layers, um, as you know, you have different layers. You have skin, and then you have the fatty tissue, and underneath you have the muscle, and then you have the bone. So the body part that specifies the deepest layer um, is coded. For example, this is including for bone, for burns or cellulitis to see how deep it is. Um, for example, they give excisional debridement that includes skin and subcutaneous tissue and muscle is coded to the muscle body part. Bypass procedures, this is really important. This is probably going to be the most challenging uh, for you to catch on. The fourth character, which is usually the body part, specifies the body part bypassed from. And the seventh character, the qualifier, in bypass procedures specifies the body part bypass too. So if I'm doing a gastric bypass, I'm going from my esophagus, would be character four, to my duodenum, that would be character seven. So on the, the tables, you'll see the various body parts from and to that are available. Uh, coronary bypass procedures. Now this is a little bit different because um, the body part identifies the number of coronary arteries bypassed to, and then the qualifier in this case specifies the vessel bypassed from. So it's a little opposite. Um, you won't see many of these procedures in this class, but this is something that you could practice on in your textbook. Um, there are many more practice opportunities with this one. So, um, Lastly, uh, multiple coronary artery bypass. If multiple coronary ar arteries are bypassed, a specific procedure is coded for each coronary by artery that uses a different device or qualifier. For example, a patient might have three vessels, three arteries that are bypassed. Two of them use a synthetic material, and the third one might use a... Uh, um, an autologous or uh, device. So depending on the device or depending on the qualifier, each um, vessel is coded differently. Okay, uh, when it comes to control, control is when we try to control bleeding um, versus more definite root control, root operations. Um, if an attempt to stop a post-procedural or acute bleeding is initially unsuccessful and to stop the bleeding requires performing a more definitive, definitive root operation such as bypass, detachment, excision, extraction, reposition, placement, or resection, then the more definite, definitive root operation is coded instead of control. Control is your first attempt to control the bleeding. If it wasn't control and they have to perform a whole new procedure, the whole new procedure is coded instead of the control. Excision versus resection, we were talking about this. Um, resection of a specific body part is coded when all of the body part is cut off rather than coding excision of a less of a specific body part. So this will really depend on your body part table, a part of the table, because um, if I say um, taking out part of the lung, lob, lung lobectomy, which is part of the entire lung, I could code that to excision, excision because it's part of a body part. However, because 
Um, it has its own body part character. It's actually considered the entire body part. So because the entire body part, then I have to code it to resection because it's the entire body part that's listed on the table. So keep an eye for that. Um, excision for graft. If an autograft is attained with a different procedure site or in order to complete the objective of the procedure, a separate procedure is coded. Um, grafts are used to take veins or arteries from different parts of the body and put them in the heart. Um, you can get skin grafts, different things. Um, it always has its own procedure, separate, um, because it's done at the same time, um, same procedural period, um, but it has its own procedure code. Fusion procedures. Um, Fusion procedures aren't meant done in many different body systems, but specifically in the upper and lower joints. Um, the body parts, uh, the body part coded for a spinal vertebrae joint rendered immobile by a spinal fusion procedure is classified by the level of the spine. There are distinct body part values for a single vertebrae joint and for multiple vertebrae joint at each spinal level. And if you open your textbook uh, your coding manuals to the lower or upper um, body or um, joints you'll look up the fusion tables you'll see the range of all the different vertebrae that could be fused a uh, continuation of this um, guideline is that if multiple vertebrae joints are fused a separate procedure code is coded for each vertebral joint that uses a different device and qualifier. Depending on when the physician gets there, they can use different techniques to fuse depending on the position of the spine. And because of this, we could use different codes depending on the types of devices or qualifiers used. For example, here it says fusion of lumbar vertebral joint posterior approach, anterior column, and fusion of lumbar joint, vertebra joint, posterior approach, posterior column are coded separately. Notice there's a difference between the columns. The N1 is anterior, one is posterior, and that specific difference will create the need for a separate code. Finally, on fusions, fusion procedures of the spine Combination of devices and materials are often used on a vertebral joint to render the joint immobile. When combinations of devices are used on the same vertebral joint, the device value coded for each procedure is as follows. Okay, if an interbody fusion device is used to render the joint immobile, the procedure is coded to the device value interbody fusion device. If the bone graft is the only device used to render the joint immobile, the procedure is coded with the device value non-autologous tissue substitute or autologous tissue substitute. Autologous means it comes from yourself. Non-autologous means it doesn't come from yourself, but it comes from another human. So if you have a mixture of autologous and non-autologous bone grafts to render the joint immobile, code the procedure with the device value autologous tissue substitute. Okay, these are all specific details. Uh, you may not see them all the time when coding, but these are just circumstances that come across. Inspection procedures B311A. The inspection of a body part performed in order to achieve the objective of the procedure is not coded separately. So basically it means inspection root operations are the very bottom. This is when the physician actually just goes to look for their own eyes into a human body but nothing is cut nothing is removed nothing else is done except to look inside the human body so that's when the only time we'll use inspection group operations um b311 if multiple tubular body parts are inspected the most distal body part the body part furthest from the starting point of the inspection is coded if multiple non-tubular body parts in a region are inspected, the body part that specifies the air, entire area inspected is coded. Uh, for example, they give the example of a cysto cystoureteroscopy with inspection of the bladder and the ureter is coded to the ureter body part value because it's the furthest place. Okay. 
um, uh, exploratory laparotomy with general inspection of abdominal contents. It's coded to the peritoneal cavity body part value. Finally, with inspection procedures, when both an inspection procedure and another procedure are performed on the same body part using the same procedural episode, if the inspection procedure is performed using a different approach other than the procedure, the inspection procedure is coded separately. Okay. For example, this patient had an endoscopic inspection of the duodenum, which is coded separately when an excision of the duodenum is performed during the same procedural episode. So they're separate codes. Okay. Occlusion versus restriction. So the objective of an embolization procedure is to completely close a vessel. That means totally close it. A great example is tying of the tubes. That's the, the layman's terms basically is the female sterilization. When you close off the fallopian tube, it's occlusion. However, when the object, objective of the embolization procedure is to narrow the lumen or vessel, the root operation is restriction. So it's basically uh, closing the lumen, but not closing it all the way. The release procedure um, in root operation release, the body part value coded is the body part being freed and not the tissue being manipulated or cut to free the body part. For example, if you're doing lysis of adhesions, it's coded to the specific intestinal body part value because it's on the intestine. It's on the intestine. So it's on the body part being freed. Okay. Release versus division, also two different but very similar root operation. If the sole objective of the procedure is freeing the body part without cutting the body part, the root operation is release. If the sole division of the procedure is to separate or transect a body part, the root operation is division. Um, so we have to understand the sole objective of the procedure. For example, freeing a nerve root from surrounding scar tissue to relieve pain is coded to release. Severing a nerve to relieve pain is, um, is considered division. So both objective is to reduce the pain, but they're different, uh, uh, basically, approaches. 3B or B315, reposition of a fractured treatment. Reduction of a displacement fracture is coded to the root operation reposition, and the applying of a cast or splint in conjunction with reposition procedure is not coded separately. So again, this is inpatient procedures. So this is what's done during the surgical period. So reposition of a fracture is always coded to the root operation reposition. Um, transplantation versus administration. Putting in mature and functioning living body part taken from another individual or animal is coded to the root operation transplantation. Putting in autologous or non-autologous cells is coded to the administration se section. So um, when we put in a body part from a another living thing that is considered transplantation and when we put in cells into one person's body, for example, for bone marrow, pancreate islet cells, or stem cells, it's considered administrative se section. The administrative section is a different section than the medical and surgical section, so it does not start with the number zero. Finally, the transfer procedures using multiple tissue layers. The root operation transfer contains qualifiers that can be used to specify when a transfer flap is composed of more than one tissue layer such as musculocutaneous cut, cutaneous, cutaneous flap. For procedures involving transfer of multiple tissue layers, of skin, uh, including skin, subcutaneous tissue, fascia, or muscle, the procedure is coded to the body part value that describes the deepest tissue layer in the flap. The qualifier can be used to describe other tissue layers that are in the flap. Okay, so again, we want to code with the deepest uh, tissue layer, okay? And they mentioned the lit layers are uh, skin, um, right underneath is subcutaneous tissue, underneath is fascia, and then the last is muscle. So when we transfer, um, 
tissue, we want to confirm how many layers are in that tissue. And we code the deepest layer. Okay. Thank you so much for your time. I hope this was informative.